All right, we're gonna keep it analog today. Maybe I'll do digital tomorrow. Um, that's a very broad question, Eric. Any tips for student designers? But I'll answer it anyways. Um, one of the things I, I tell student designers is be a sponge, okay? So no matter what you're doing, try and learn from those experiences. I'm just starting with a plane and bending this plane, if you will. Let's find the center point, which is roughly there. Feels about right, just a, a guesstimate. And then now I can figure out the design. I mean, obviously something of a, not obviously, but something of an orthographic is always helpful if you're doing some sort of design. You know, maybe we'll cut back here for these triggers and we can come back up for our central control point. Maybe have a surface transition through there. I don't know, I like the idea of something maybe a little bit more faceted so we can at least start there, see where we go, see where we end up. But you know, these thumbnails are super helpful because they help you kind of anticipate and plan what you're gonna be going for. Ram Hunt Suthar, I actually have a perfume bottle sketch that I did on my YouTube. You can check that out youtube.com slash sketchday.com. Okay, so going back to Eric's question about any tips for student designers. Like I said, be a sponge, absorb it all, look for opportunities to learn things that are adjacent to industrial design, but not necessarily uh, directly related to industrial design. So a couple ways industrial design, for example, has evolved over time is a lot of our products that we do tend to tend to have a digital and physical component. So it wouldn't hurt to, you know, take a little bit of a computer science class, for example, to say, hey, at least I can understand and participate in the conversation when it comes to digital products as an industrial designer. I think that's that's important. Um, I, for one, in my career. I've tried to just learn, right? Just learn what you can, absorb it all. There was a question as well about what I do, who do I work for? I work for myself right now, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Um, and I, I suspect many people are right now in these, in these tough times, but I actually prefer that personally. So that's what I do. All right, let's get some, let's get some uh, controls here. Uh, let me think. I'm going to do a joystick here. So just two ellipses to start, maybe three. And then let's do another stick here. Something like that. And okay, I think this is backwards. I need to have the, the buttons up, up top, but it's all right. We'll just keep them small and weird. Now Sony will never hire me. I totally messed up. And the commenters are gonna be like, that's the worst controller ever. Just kidding. All right, so here, let's do a D-pad. And I'm gonna carve out a little bit, similar to this side. Feels right. And let's just have our, our D-pad here. And just to make this simple, I'm gonna just have this be a continuous surface, like so. Okay, so it kind of scoops in a little bit. Um, maybe we do have some functional block here, logo, a couple of surface details. You know, if this is where, you know, maybe an accessory connects, we can sketch that in. All right, I can feel I can feel the drawing mojo coming back, so that's good. I I just haven't felt creative in the last week or a few days, so. Yeah, it's it's been wild. But again, thank you for all the support messages. Um, you know, people are asking, what can what can we do? What can we do to help? I think just speak up, stamp it out, wherever you see it. And I mean, hatred, racism of any form, just do what you can. All right. Okay, let's add a quick background here, like so. And now I can start to add some marker to finish this out. All right, I think next we had, I could draw the new PS4 controller, but what, what's the fun in that? Because it already exists, you know? 
Um, sometimes I pick a color of the day. What should the color of the day be today? So let's say every drawing has a color. What should it be? Obviously gonna use some gray on this. What's up, Andrew? Boston, Jordan, welcome. Jordan's also a Patreon, thank you. And supporter, uh, Remy says interior or automo autonomous interior. I could do that. So that would combine the two things. Um, the request for an interior, but also, uh, you know, maybe some autonomous vehicle. That would be fun. It's crazy that the future can seem so bright, but also, you know, your optimism can kind of get gut checked by what's happening around you. It's just so weird, but I do believe in human goodness, like I said, and we can move past all this. So thank you once again for the support. All right, so let's finish this up and just kind of create some focus. Now, when I do a page, I don't like to give everything the same attention. Someone says natural pink. Okay, we can throw some pink on. Pink will be a challenge. Everything has some pink, okay? We'll, we'll do that. Um, <laughs> I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but maybe it's just the, uh, the sticks here or something. Um, I'll definitely put some pink around my little IO block and maybe this connector is, is also pink. All right, I like that challenge. Anyhow, I don't want everything to have the same focus. So if you kind of localize and keep your marker in the right spots, then you can create emphasis and really just visually tell the story of whatever it is you're drawing, whether it's a scene or whether it's something like this controller or it could be a, a full experience or whatever, right? As the creator, you have the power to kind of guide things. Now here I'm just focusing on the shadow core, okay? Because much like a cylinder, here's, here's another lesson on lighting for you guys. So let's say I have a cylinder like so. Quick mini lesson here. And let's say I'm looking at this cylinder, but from the top, what's actually happening, you know, as I'm looking at this, is we have a light source. And that light source is casting light rays. And some of these rays at a certain point, because of the, uh, the line tangent to the surface at the point of incidence, you're gonna have certain light rays reflecting more towards you. And as we move away, reflecting away from you. Okay, so that's gonna cause something like a highlight. And then as light passes this edge, you're gonna get a shadow core and then a bit of a gradient in between those points, okay? So that's really what's happening. As, as you do those quick marker sketches, if you understand the why, it's easy to figure out the how and create a strategy about how you're gonna do it, okay? So that's the why. Now, if you look at the controller, what I'm imagining, right, is maybe a cross section. Cross section just means if I were to kind of cut through this, this thing, has a cross section that is cylindrical. So at a certain point, I'm gonna get shadow core and I'm gonna get highlight, right? So that's that's how I like to think about things. Now, with this particular drawing, sometimes you get environmental light or ambient light reflecting back onto the object. So that's why I don't do the shadow all the way to the edge or even the highlight. You know, you're gonna have some fall off and a little bit of gradient between these areas. So. Back to this, uh, Kasra on Instagram, I can't say your full screen name, is asking what got me into sketching and industrial design. I was a math major in college and I had a friend who was studying industrial design who showed me what the major looked like and I thought to myself, wow, this is cool. My father growing up was a chemist and business executive growing up. But in his spare time, he liked to draw and paint. So I think I was influenced by that, but I didn't quite realize that I could make a living being a designer artist. And when my friend showed me the major, I thought, this is it. You know, I can draw, I can be creative. Um, I get to use computers and these tools. And so I, I applied to my program and got in and did this design thing for a bit. And I thought, this is pretty fun. And I was okay at it. So I thought, let's see where this goes. And here I am 
you know, 15, almost 15 years later, actually, it's about 15 years later, I'm doing it. And it's been good so far. So a lot of the work I do to kind of circle back to the initial question about who I work for, I do a lot of illustration work. Of course, I do these streams. Um, I create products for designers. So if you like sketching digitally, you can check out my brushes on my store. It's a great way to support what I'm doing. Um, and I conduct workshops, but I also do design projects for clients as well. So, um, and I do streams for other people. You know, workshops online have totally picked up lately. And I think part of that is just, um, you know, the situation, circumstances we're in, kind of being a little bit more, more careful with things. All right. So I decided to make this upper portion uh, pink because pink is our color today, All right? It's really challenging. But I'll do the uh, autonomous vehicle sketch next. We'll go from there. I actually have marker brushes too in those sets. So that's for Procreate and Photoshop. They are separate sets, however. Although I haven't tested importing the Photoshop brushes into Procreate, you might be able to do that, but they are not the exact same. So didn't want to create exactly the same thing. Kind of defeats the purpose, I think. So yeah, feel free to check that out. Maybe it's some off-brand PS controller and has that big, you know, touch area at the top that everyone loves or hates. So I'm just gonna kind of block this in. Some gray marker. Thank you, Daryl. Appreciate it. Yeah, I am proud of the Unity too, man. It's it's brought me to tears a few times. I mean, real talk. I don't necessarily, I mean, I guess it depends on who you talk to if I cry a lot, but um, yeah, it's just been just a powerful moment and I feel like we're in living, like <laughs> living out history right now. It's, it's a weird feeling um, being human and just being part of a, a moment with so many people. So once again, thank you for everything. All right, so let's get this D-pad in like so. And I'm leaving a little bit of, of a light spot there because, you know, that's where we might have some highlight catching, okay? So again, if you understand the why, the how and where you put stuff is pretty easy to figure out. This I'm gonna have to pull out with maybe a little bit of white. Let's get these buttons in. A yacht hull in perspective. I may save that for tomorrow's stream. I only want to do about three, four sketches today. Um, but I do have videos on my YouTube. If you're curious, there's one that shows me drawing a shoe and a mouse using the same or similar technique I would use to sketch uh, a yacht. So you can check that out. All right, so this drawing needs a couple more things. You know, I need to kind of show this connector maybe label it, you know, this is a, I don't know, accessory. Accessory connect. I don't know, maybe it's a mic, maybe it's a keyboard thing, whatever. I like to add texture, just a couple dots here. You could also use pencil if you wanted to, just some shading, that kind of thing, right? It's okay to mix media do it all the time Just a couple more stipples now I want to get some shadowing in here Andrew T says he bought a Prismacolor marker set and can't get the caps off did you get them used or is this new what's the situation there I'm curious um, I haven't that had that issue with Prismacolors but I have had that issue with uh, add markers. So chart pack markers, I've definitely had that issue, but not so much with Prismacolor. So sketch a day live. If you're just joining, I'm Spencer. I go live typically three times a week. We're a little bit late this week because I just needed a break. I needed to kind of just think on things, chill, but I'm back. I'm here. I guess I could have colored those buttons, but whatevs, leave it be. 
Thank you, Nathan. Uh, Elias says, how do I get smooth marker lines? Mine always turn out streaky. Um, it's a combination of things. One, you want to make sure that your marker is juicy. So if you're using markers, make sure they're new. If you're using Copic markers, just refill or top them off. Sometimes I have to do that on the stream even, depending on which markers I use. Also, make sure you store your markers properly. There's a video on that on the channel as well, as to how to store your markers. A few differences in opinion about horizontal or vertical, but most importantly, just keep them in an airtight container. And that's gonna help preserve the life of your markers. Because I have markers that I've had since 2004 that still, made a little mistake here, that still are juicy. So it's, it's about how you store your markers more so than other factors. Um, and then as you're blending, just keep moving. You know, try and have a light touch as well. I find that helpful. Let's get a little bit more depth in some of the pink here. Okay. Just kind of scrub that. By scrub, I just mean go back and forth real fast and put down the ink on the paper which helps improve the, uh, the flow, I guess, on the paper. It also helps to use marker paper, I should mention. Um, so I am using marker paper here.